Alex Earl's doing 30 hard, so should you. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about a very trendy challenge that's going on, especially on TikTok, called 30 hard. Now a lot of you have probably heard of the challenge 75 hard, and if you haven't, I can do a video on it, but there are a lot of videos out there on 75 hard already. But 30 hard is a shorter version of 75 hard, and I'll explain the differences in a bit. In particular, Alex Earl, which a lot of people know, she's very, very famous on social media, has decided to take on the 30 hard challenge. And as she does the 30 hard challenge herself, she's encouraging her followers to do the same. So what I want to do in this video is I want to talk about what 30 hard is and the pros and cons of doing this challenge. And at the end, I will tell you if I personally think as a dietitian, if this challenge is worth doing. I do want to be clear though, that this video is not a hate video on Alex Earl. I think she's lovely. I don't have anything negative to say. This video is solely on the 30 hard challenge. She will be brought up though, because she is the one promoting promoting this challenge to the public. But before we start, hi, my name is Katie. I am a registered dietitian and certified personal trainer. My goal here is to help you achieve the best health you possibly can and also learn about different products and programs so you can save your money and make the best choice for yourself. Ultimately, my goal is for you to be your best, whatever that looks like. If you're new, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay a part of the community and continue to learn more. All right, now that I got that out of the way, let's begin the video. So what is 30 hard? In a nutshell, 30 hard is a shorter version version of the challenge or program known as 75 hard. Briefly, 75 hard is a program. The actual creator of 70 hard does not like when people call it a challenge. He instead wants people to call it a program that essentially helps people be more consistent with various aspects of their health, such as nutrition, exercise, and other wellness practices. Despite being really focused on health, the author of 75 hard actually says the program is more about establishing mental discipline, consistency, and self-esteem. Now I do want to give you a brief overview of what 75 hard is so that you can understand what 30 hard is. So the basics of 75 hard include picking a diet based on your needs, but there are some rules. So you must avoid alcohol and processed foods. You are not allowed to have any cheat meals. You must drink a gallon of water or around four liters per day. Complete two daily workouts. Now both workouts need to be 45 minutes each for totaling at least 90 minutes of exercise per day. And one has to be done outside. You also need to read at least 10 minutes of a nonfiction book each day. And the book has to be on self-development. And then finally, you need to take a progress photo every day. Now the kicker of this challenge is if you mess up even one day or you don't do something one day, you have to start all the way back at zero. This is what makes the challenge even more difficult. Okay. Okay, so now that you understand the general concept of 75 hard, what is the difference between 75 hard and 30 hard? Well, first things first, 30 hard isn't actually a program. It's actually relatively new and has been popularized by Alex Earl. Basically this 30 hard program has been modified and influenced from the original 75 hard program. So here are the main concepts of the 30 hard challenge, according to Alex Earl. So you still need to drink one gallon or four liters of water per day. You still need to do two 45 minute workouts and one has to be indoor and one has to be outdoor. You cannot drink any alcohol. You can follow the diet of your choice. You must cook five nights per week at home with only two nights at maximum that you can order out. And finally, you need to journal for at least 30 minutes every day or read 10 pages of a book every day. So as you can see, there are some similarities between the 30 hard program that is done by Alex Earl and the original 75 hard program. In particular, making sure that you're drinking a gallon of water a day, you're doing two 45 minute workouts with one being outside, you're reading daily and you're not drinking any alcohol. However, there are quite a few differences too. One Thing that Alex Earl mentions is that instead of following a very strict diet, she's really going to focus more on just cooking more at home and eating minimally processed foods. Her perspective is that she'd rather establish a healthier relationship with food that's more sustainable instead of following an overly restrict diet. I do think it's important to mention that in Alex's podcast, she did an entire episode where she talked about her experience with disordered eating in the past. So it makes sense to me that she would adjust this program based on her needs and making sure that it is 
isn't overly strict, which can sometimes end up re-triggering some of the disordered eating tendencies that she or other people may have in the past. Also, I absolutely love that one of her posts, she says that if you're mad at me for not doing 75 hard, mind you business. Why I like this is because it emphasizes the fact that it's none of your business. It's none of any of our businesses when somebody decides to pursue a healthier lifestyle in a way that works for them. And honestly, as long as someone is trying to better their health in a positive, healthy way, then who are we to judge how they do that? We really need to start being happy with the fact that people are just trying to better their lives and live healthier lifestyles. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the 30 hard challenge. First, we'll talk about the pros. The first thing I love is that it discourages drinking alcohol. Look, I hate to break it to you, but drinking alcohol is not healthy. Personally, I've really disliked drinking alcohol, especially over the past couple of years. I find that it makes me feel terrible. It makes me anxious, even for a couple of days afterwards. And I hate the fact that my next day is completely wasted because I'm too tired and exhausted to do anything else. While it may be unrealistic to never drink alcohol again, some people can do it and that's awesome if that's you. But I do think it's a good idea to start taking note of how much alcohol you are drinking and if you are relying on it as a social crutch. In particular, I think it is reasonable to try to challenge yourself not to have any alcohol for 30 days. For starters, I think it is very helpful for you to identify, again, whether or not you use alcohol as a social crutch and how you experience social situations when you're sober. Also, when I don't drink alcohol, I feel my absolute best. My sleep is better. I don't feel so anxious sometimes. I feel like I can perform better physically and mentally, and I'm definitely not as puffy and bloated. The second thing I love is that the 30 hard challenge encourages consuming minimally processed foods. At the end of the day, a lot of the issues we have with the westernized style diet is that it is very highly processed and really high in things like calories, added sugar, salt, and fat. I wanna be clear that I think it is completely unrealistic to have absolutely no processed food. We have to be careful with the word process because it can mean a lot of different things. For this program, I think the focus is avoiding ultra processed foods, which as I just mentioned, are usually higher in those added calories, added salt, added fats, and sugars. Keep in mind that a lot of food is processed in some way. It just depends on how you use that definition. But again, the goal is to consume foods that are as minimally processed as possible and only as needed. Now, some examples of this could include making sure that you're chopping up your own vegetables or using frozen vegetables that don't have any added ingredients. This could mean not buying takeout and making your foods at home. One of the biggest things I can recommend to people is avoiding a lot of takeout foods or a lot of pre-made foods because these are the ones that are gonna be most processed. They're going to have the highest amount of calories, sugar, salt, fat, etc. So if you can start to lower your intake of these alone, that will do you a lot of good. I also love that Alex Earl has been showing herself doing a lot of grocery hauls and showing that a healthy diet consists of a variety of different foods such as healthy proteins, vegetables, fruit, complex carbohydrates, and healthy fats. The third thing I love is that 30 hard encourages physical activity. Now I'll talk about some of the downsides of this in a minute, but I absolutely love when a program encourages physical activity. Physical activity is something that we should prioritize every single day. And I do love the fact that Alex showcases a variety of different ways to be active, such as going for long walks, doing yoga, doing strength training, doing Pilates, things like that. The fourth thing I love is that it encourages journaling and reading. Journaling is a really awesome practice, especially if you do it before bed and you're that type of person where you start to overthink right before you're about to sleep and all you can do is think about the day or your future or things like that. By journaling, you're able to essentially mind dump everything that's on your mind onto a piece of paper and get it out so that when you go to sleep, you're not thinking about these things constantly. I personally find this very helpful myself. On top of this, I think reading is another awesome practice that we need to really encourage as part of a healthy lifestyle. The first thing is, especially if you're doing this before bed, it gets your eyes away from screens and being on your phone too much or watching TV can actually disrupt your sleep. So by reading a book for 20 to 30 minutes before bed, this is a really good way to get your eyes off of the blue light and really start to unwind. Second, I like that the challenge encourages nonfiction reading. I personally love nonfiction books because it helps me to expand my horizons, expand my knowledge, help me think a little bit differently and be curious about other topics. 
Of course, if you like fiction books and this is the only way that you're going to read, then I would encourage that too. The fifth reason is because I do think it is a good reset for a lot of people. Now, some people might disagree with me on this, but I do think that some people, not everybody, because everyone's a little bit different, but some people do need that sort of kick in the pants to get a healthy lifestyle going. Not everyone has the ability to just get up one day and make the change that they want to, and they need something to motivate them to get started. Now, this challenge is significantly less strict compared to 75 hard, meaning that for the average person, this program is going to be more sustainable and doable than starting off with the 75 hard program. And some people might love the 75 hard program and that's fine, that's fantastic. But for people who don't want to do that or they find it overly daunting, the 30 hard challenge can be a good alternative. Overall, I think that it does have a lot of positive behaviors and healthy habits that someone can establish. And it can be just the thing that somebody needs to establish a healthy routine. And the sixth thing is particularly related to Alex Earl, but I do like the fact that Alex is telling people to adjust the program based on their own needs. She's adjusted the program based on her own individual needs. And I think it's really good to showcase the fact that not everyone is going to be able to do the program exactly how it is laid out because everyone has different lifestyles. So being able to make modifications based on your own personal situation is really important. And I like the fact that she is promoting balance and talks about the issues with over restriction. All right, so now let's dive into some of the cons of doing 30 hard. One of my biggest issues with 30 hard and 75 hard is the fact that they force people to exercise at least once a day outside. Despite what people say, I don't care if you're doing 75 hard or 30 hard, there are environments where you might not be able to safely exercise outside. For instance, I'm in Canada right now and the weather outside is awful. It's currently snowing outside, but we're about to get freezing rain. So to expect me to go on an hour walk right now is really unrealistic. Sure, if you want to be that person that goes and runs in freezing rain, uh, I don't encourage it, but if you want to do that, fine. But I don't think the average person wants to do that or it is safe for them to do so. Another thing to keep in mind is that we don't want exercise to become something that you really hate. So if you hate working outside in bad weather or you hate working outside in general and you are much more likely to exercise in a gym or at home, then I'd rather you do something that you're more likely to sustain long term than doing something that you dread and ultimately you will associate exercise with something you don't like. For me, if you're going to do two workouts a day and the weather is terrible outside, I'd rather you just do two workouts inside or one workout inside. At least you're being active. And I think the fact that they're trying to get you to be outside at least once, regardless of the weather, is a little unreasonable. Sure, if you live in Florida or California and the weather is amazing, then lucky you. But not everyone has that. And again, that's why I think we need to make adjustments based on our personal situations. The second issue I have is that the instructions are very vague. Picking a diet of your choice doesn't actually help a lot of people because that doesn't tell them very much. What diet are they supposed to choose? What is the structure of the diet? What types of food should they have or avoid? It doesn't really give any specifics. Now, I think the intention with this is to base it on your own personal needs and preferences, but a lot of people need more guidance than that. This is why I do recommend working with a dietitian if you're really curious about what eating patterns would work best for you. From the videos I've seen of Alex's meals so far, it seems that she's focusing on a high protein diet with complex carbohydrates and a lot of different plants which is great. But if someone decides to pick a totally different diet, they're going to have totally different results. For example, the diet they choose might not provide enough calories or nutrients leading to depletion in energy levels. So it's really hard to make an apples to apples comparison because everyone's version of what the perfect diet for them looks like will be different. On top of this, it says to exercise twice a day for 45 minutes without a lot of context. What exercises are the people supposed to do? A lot of people seem to be doing a walk paired with maybe Maybe strength training or yoga, but really these instructions are vague and for the average person, they may not know where to start. Ultimately, I do think that the best thing you can do is add variety. So going for walks, maybe doing some Pilates or yoga, doing some strength training, do a variety of exercises to see what works best for you and based on your own goals. The third issue I have is that drinking a gallon of water or four liters a day of water is a lot. For most people, drinking a gallon or four liters a day is more than they'll need. The thing to keep in mind is that 
everyone has different hydration needs based on different factors, such as their physical activity levels, the climate they live in, their own health conditions, and so many other things. So to have everyone drink the same amount of water may be beneficial for some people and not for others. While I absolutely love the fact that this challenge encourages people to drink more water, which is awesome, I do think it's probably better to suggest drinking between two to four liters of water and also looking for other indicators of hydration, for example, such as feeling dizzy or having headaches or the color of your urine. The fourth concern I have with this is that it is only a 30 day program. So hopefully for a lot of people, they establish healthy habits during this and they continue it after the challenge. For a lot of people, they may follow the 30 days and then go back to their old habits. So for me, I rather you adjust the challenge so that you can last longer than 30 days. This is something that you can do for the rest of your life. For example, instead of doing two 45 minute workouts a day, which is challenging for quite a few people, what if you focused on doing one 45 minute workout a day and you do it well? This is probably going to be more sustainable for you because exercising every day for the average person can be a challenge. Now, there are some people that love to work out and for them, exercising hours on end is not an issue for them, but we do need to be realistic for the average person. So for me with this 30 hard challenge, I would really customize it to your own needs and then loosely base it off of the rules of the 30 hard challenge itself. Okay, so now I wanna just go over my overall thoughts of the program. Honestly, after looking at the 30 hard challenge, I don't think it's that bad. It encourages a lot of healthy habits such as eating a minimally processed diet, exercising daily, not drinking alcohol, and doing other wellness practices such as reading and journaling. There are some areas that I would personally change though. Like I mentioned, forcing people to exercise outside regardless of the weather and twice a day might not be reasonable for some people. I also think that having more specific guidance on the diet would be more helpful. In particular, I think the focus should really be on the importance of getting a variety of nutrients and colors in your diet, making sure that you're consuming minimally processed foods and showing people how to even do it and a lot more detailed information like that. Again, the best thing you can do if you want really specific guidance is to work with a registered dietitian who is trained to help you with this. I do also think that the water goal is a bit over the top. We really need to be basing our hydration on our own unique needs and also to keep in mind that other sources of fluids do count towards our hydration. Yes, you absolutely should focus on getting water first, but if you were to, for example, drink a coffee or tea and you do it regularly, that can actually count towards your hydration. Or for example, if you have a brothy soup, that counts towards hydration. So these things do add up and it's not just water that counts towards it. That said, I do think it is a way more reasonable approach compared to the 75 hard program. In terms of Alex Earl herself, again, this video isn't really based on her, but rather the challenge she's promoting. I like the fact that she is promoting a lot of sustainable, healthy lifestyle behaviors and showcasing the fact that, that even she needs to challenge herself to adopt healthier habits. And at the time of recording this video, I haven't seen any videos she has posted yet that promotes harmful nutrition or fitness advice or inaccurate information. So I hope she keeps that up. One thing I do want to just comment on is that after reading some of the comments on her videos, I do feel people are being a little harsh, especially related to alcohol. One thing to keep in mind is that people have different relationships with alcohol and different struggles, and we don't personally know what her unique situation is with that. I find a lot of people are doubting her ability to avoid alcohol for a month, and maybe that will be a struggle for her. I have no idea. But whenever someone is trying to adopt healthier habits, I don't believe we should be mean to that person. I don't think we should be doubting that person. I think we should be encouraging healthy behaviors, especially when it comes to drinking alcohol. If somebody wants to try to reduce or avoid alcohol, I think we should encourage that behavior. Everyone should be kinder when it comes to this, regardless of who the person is. Ultimately, if you decide to do this challenge, I do always like to give a reminder that it might not be right for you. And the best thing you can do is work with your healthcare provider to make sure that it is. Or if there are some things that you should consider adjusting in the challenge so that it is right for you. If you are in the middle of this challenge and you are enjoying it or you're not enjoying it, I would love to know in the comments. So let me know. And like always, if you enjoyed this video, Video. I would love it if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you could stay a part of this community and continue to learn more. And also, if you do have any other ideas for topics you want me to cover, please let me know in the comments as well. And I'll see you in the next video.